<laughs> yeah, ain't I a stinker? What you're watching right now is one of the only moments in cinema history that Mickey Mouse and Bugs Bunny shared a scene together. This crossover is bigger than you think, so let's talk about how it even became a reality. Animation is a constantly evolving medium with new worlds made all the time, but still, there are characters who have never truly gone away. Ones made decades ago, who stick around today, and are always recognizable for the modern generation. Mickey Mouse is a prime example, acting as the main mascot for Disney, and never fading into obscurity. Then, you got Bugs Bunny, the official mascot of Warner Brothers. While not as big as Mickey, he still stands the test of time. Both of these characters come from different production companies, so I Obviously, they wouldn't be interacting with each other, more so doing their own thing. However, that's what leads me to the wonderful world of Who Framed Roger Rabbit, which, in the most basic explanation, placed live action and animated characters together. For those unfamiliar with the movie, you would really have an awesome time if you like cartoons of any kind. Just imagine something on the scale of Avengers, except with iconic animated characters everywhere. Yeah, it gets good. While the movie offers stunning visuals in any shot, there are are some highlights that deserve more appreciation. One of those highlights is right here, when protagonist Eddie is falling through the sky and he's immediately met with two familiar faces. Mickey and Bugs are having their cartoony hijinks as per usual, and even though the entire scene lasts around 35 seconds, we have to take a step back and realize this is massive. Think about it, Warner Bros and Disney are competing companies. Each of them wants a consumer's attention and to bring awareness to their brand, so they're doing whatever it takes to win your support. Because of that, these two opposing characters sharing the screen together was unheard of. It just wasn't necessary. Now we know that's the case, but that begs the question, why did they appear in Who Framed Roger Rabbit? How did this crossover even happen? Well, the crew behind Who Framed Roger Rabbit wanted to get as many popular animated characters as possible, and of course, they sought after the biggest names. To ensure that Mickey Mouse and Bugs Bunny could appear in the movie, the companies reached a deal. Both characters needed to be on the screen for the same amount of time, and have the same amount of spoken lines. Makes sense, right? With two absolute behemoths, splitting screen time down the middle is a fair way of giving audiences what they want, while not leaning too much on either character. <laughs> Jumping without a parachute? Kinda dangerous, ain't it? Yeah. Yeah, uh, you could get killed, huh? So, you might have noticed that Mickey comes out slightly earlier than his bunny counterpart, about one or two seconds. Bugs Bunny even pulls his parachute a second before Mickey, meaning the mouse just straight up appeared on screen for longer. Don't worry though, the deal stayed in place, as we'll soon find out. At the end of Who Framed Roger Rabbit, tons of animated characters band together in an ambitious crossover like no other, and the whole thing is a celebration of this very medium. While many of the characters here are merely on the side and don't get much of the focus, Mickey and Bugs are once again at the center of things. It may not be the same skydiving scene, but this is still the same movie, meaning that the agreed upon deal is still in place. When they all gather in the beginning, both characters get another piece of dialogue each, continuing the balance from earlier. <laughs> He want no rabbit. Now the dance scene is crowded and it's hard to keep up with everything, but pay attention to Bugs and Mickey. In order to accurately split their screen time, they appear next to each other. Chances are if you see one of the characters, the other is in the same shot. Also, remember when Mickey got slightly more time before? That's bounced out in some very specific shots here. Since Bugs is taller, a few frames are recognizable when you can see him, but not Mickey. There's also another small part of the movie where we see just him. Oh yeah, and as it turns out, this same deal happened with two other competing characters, Donald Duck and Daffy Duck. They were both versing each other while playing the piano, and it gave you pretty much everything you could have wanted. The scene worked a bit different than before, since they weren't always on the screen at the same exact time, but the agreement was still in place. Neither one of them could be here longer than the other. You know what? I think these guys have an awesome dynamic. It's kinda sad they don't cross over more often. Overall, Who Framed Roger Rabbit was something special. You never thought these characters from rival companies would come together, but lo and behold, it happened. Will we ever get to see crossovers like this again? The future is unpredictable, but hey, there's always still a chance.
But anyway, that's all for this video. Subscribe for more awesome cartoon videos. Give a thumbs up and comment below let me know what you think. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.